I want to introduce you to my good friend Jay Matenga. Jay is uh, zooming in from late at night in New Zealand at the moment. Uh, Jay, uh, great to see you today. Thanks for joining us. And um, Jay is a, a, an accomplished uh, scholar of, along the way. But I think also he's a very down to earth guy. And I really love this man. He's a brilliant example of somebody that puts his faith into action every day. He leads the uh, mission, Missions Interlink work in New Zealand, bringing together agencies across the country uh, focused on global mission, which is a great work. He's also very much involved in the World Evangelical Alliance having been involved at least for the last 13 years and most recently the last year or so leading the Missions Commission focusing on mission and evangelism. Um, Jay's studied uh, in New Zealand, the UK, oh by the way all nations, and of course the US uh, along the way and it's a great joy. Uh, Jay, welcome and I want to hand over to you. Thank you very much. The mutuality mandate together in the Missio Day. Well, kia ora everybody from uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, by way of introduction, I'll uh, greet you in Māori. Um, kia tau te aroha. Noa kia koutou uh, me te rangamari e he mea nā te atua, nā tō mātou mātua, nā te ariki hoki, nā ihu karaiti. Grace and peace to you all in the God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. O te he mauri ora. Uh, this is the vital life force. Well, my presentation today, this, this breath of life or the vital life force comes uh, to us mediated through Ephesians 2, 14 to 18. If you'll permit me to paraphrase, I'd like to rework the passage thus that you see on the screen. I'll read it out uh, for you. For Christ has made shalom possible. Those allegiant to him from a vast diversity of backgrounds are brought into unity as one people. By his sacrificial obedience, he tore down the barriers of prejudice between us, ending all criteria for legalistic judgmentalism. Instead, he invites us into his presence to participate in God's shalom together as one people of God, a new humanity. As covenantal communities in Christ, our relationship with God and one another is harmonized. Our basis for hostility is ended. The good news is that the shalom experience is now. Sorry, I think I must have muted there for a while. You have the uh, scripture had the scripture there on the screen. We've had some little technical difficulties. But I am Jay Martanga of the, the Māori tribe Ngāti Kahunganu of Lake Wairapa at the lower end of the North Island of New Zealand. So from my base here in Auckland, I serve the World Evangelical Alliance as the director of the Global Witness Department and simultaneously as the executive director of the WEA's Mission Commission which is a subset of the Global Witness Department. I'm seconded to the WEA for half my time, as Andy pointed out, from Missions Interlink, uh, the Missions Alliance in New Zealand, which I also lead. It's a sister organization to Global Connections in the UK. As you might imagine, I have quite a few balls in the air at any one time. If I was to slap a label on myself uh, to define my best contribution to God's mission, I'd probably nail it down to being a theologian of missions practice. My particular passion is to help navigate the way forward for us, um, for missions in the new era ahead of us. One that's been emerging for some time, but it's accelerated by the COVID-19 crisis. If I were to trace my discontent with current missions practice, I'd pause right here and point to my time at All Nations Christian College. I studied there, I studied my MA there in 97 and 98 under Dr. David Bennett, who got a second doctorate there. He's probably got more now, but he took me under his wing and he pointed me to theories about group development that were radically unconventional for missions research in its day. But what I learned then remains foundational to my ministry to this day. The subject matter is now emerging as mainstream and finding stiff resistance among some sectors of conservative evangelicalism. 
I remember Dave telling me that it takes about 20 years for novel ideas in academia to emerge as popular thinking. And he was more or less spot on if the philosophical roots of post-colonialism and critical race theory are anything to go by. I'm going to go through five points of uh, missions uh, today, and we'll first look at missions defined. My time at ANCC set me on a path of critical engagement with what we understand mission and missions uh, to be. I use the terms very purposefully. I follow Hartenstein and Bart in viewing mission singular as God's self-revelation, the articulation of the character of God, with an invitation from God to participate in the self-giving life of God in Christ. This, of course, is known as the Missio Dei. That's mission uh, singular. Then there are missions plural. Well, these represent human activities that flow from our intention to participate in the mission of God in a given time and context. Personally, I reserve missions plural terminology for transboundary service that is somewhat organizationally constrained. Service beyond the directive influence of the local church. Service within the directive influence of the local church I consider to be, well, ministry. Well, I think it's unreasonable to expect the whole church to be involved in missions plural. But I do believe by our very nature that all believers are participants in the Missio Dei. I contend that only some are called to be transboundary servants. Transboundary service is a gift from God, like celibacy or martyrdom. It's, it's not for everyone. Well, Leslie Newbegin observed this in the gospel in a pluralist society, which I studied there at All Nations, when he states, quote, one searches in vain through the letters of St. Paul to find any suggestion that he anywhere lays it on the conscience of his readers that they ought to be involved in active mission, end quote. And here I interpret Newbegin as meaning missions plural. Service beyond the directive influence of the local church is a specialist role, deserving of support, but it need not be the lot or the primary concern of every follower of Christ. I try to keep these concepts of mission and missions separate. I acknowledge that the terminology of mission, missions, and missionary is mired in contention. The terms were born out of a Christendom colonial impulse, and they're still are still tainted by that. In his uh, prologue to the book Transcending Mission, Michael Stroop observes, quote, mission language forms particular ideals and notions that shape identity and purpose that, that, that determines why and how we act, end quote. Stroop eventually expresses a desire to drop the terms altogether. However, I believe they remain functionally useful when reasonably defined. I open this semantic explanation because, um, with this semantic e explanation, because I want to affirm a different way of understanding our participation in the purposes of God for the new era that I see emerging. How are we to understand and live out the Missio Day in our day and in all contexts? So missions reframed. In his book, Miss Missional Theology, uh, John Franke uh, observes that mission singular is, quote, an attribute of God, an essential element of the divine character. Therefore, it will never come to a conclusion and must continue throughout eternity. This eternal mission has its origins in the life of God, who from all eternity has been in an active relationship involving the giving, receiving, and the sharing of love between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, end quote. And we are invited to participate in that loving community as part of our being in Christ. Well, this is quite the departure from our salvation-oriented perspective, where missions for some is limited to the to the activities that get people over the line and in, into the kingdom of God. No, this framing of mission and missions continues far beyond that 
to include our very life in Christ eternally, sharing in, the, in Christ's loving communion with the Father and the Spirit. Well, in agreement with Stroop, if we can conceive of our participation in the mission of God in fresh, biblically authentic ways, we can start to reshape the definition, identity, purpose, and activities of our missions. And to that end, I believe we need to shift the anchor of our evangelical mission narrative or missions narrative from Matthew 28, 18 to 20 to John 17, 18 to 26, from what has been popularized as the Great Commission to what I consider to be the Great Commitment. By doing so, I believe we will successfully reorient the practice of missions from a biblically questionable task focus to a biblically defensible relationship focus. For example, Matthew 24, 14 would cease to be read as an objective but return to its rightful place as a promise that God will fulfill. Agency for missions shifts from being anthropocentric to theocentric, or more specifically, pneumocentric. It will prompt a shift from a colonial industrial expansionist perspective to an indigenous governance perspective, from imposition to invitation, and so the binaries could continue. But I don't want to emphasize the either or. Rather, I desire to articulate something I believe is better fit for purpose according to the biblical narrative and the needs of the era ahead of us. Well, in John 17, 18, Jesus prays to the Father, just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. And Jesus proceeds to articulate how the Father sent the Son. We need not look elsewhere for the how. And we dare not interpret John 20, 21, where Jesus restates this, apart from what Jesus prayed earlier in this Great Commission passage. The Father sent the Son in integrated loving unity. And this expression of unity between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit brings glory to the Father. And so we are sent into the world wherever we find ourselves living as participants in this integrated loving unity. And as we do so, the world will notice. The world will believe because they see evidence of it. And the world will know because they experience the positive impact of it that the Father lovingly sent the Son. So how does this all outwork? It's it is by our Holy Spirit enabled integrated loving unity, a reflection of the loving unity within the God community, that we are witnesses testifying to the Lordship of Christ and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. It is precisely our loving unity that glorifies the Father. As Leslie Newbegin notes, again in the Gospel in a Pluralistic Society, I quote, um, mission is an acted out doxology that is as deep as secret. Its purpose is that God may be glorified, end quote. Well, Newbegin may not have specifically had this in mind, but I believe uh, Paul helps us understand this in Romans 12, 1 and 2 here. In the context of the chapter, book, and, and other epistles uh, outside of Romans, I believe Paul is telling his readers that our self-denying, one anotherness is the living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable to God as true worship. We can worship God no more effectively than through our mutual ob obedience to Christ's teaching that we love one another as the Father loves us in Christ. Because by doing so, we affirm that God is love. And that is the source and purpose of the mission of God. If we are demonstrating the, uh, the gospel in this way, our evangelism becomes a simple act of providing an explanation for why such unity and diversity is possible. Again, Newbegin observes, quote, almost all the proclamations of the gospel, which are described in Acts, are in response to questions asked by those outside the church, end quote. This is a, a phenomenon that continued beyond the biblical period, as Alan Crider notes in his book, The Patient Ferment of the Early Church. 
as part of our explanation of this demonstration, we then extend an invitation to those not in Christ to join us through their penitent allegiance to Christ. What we commonly call salvation then is an invitation to belong. As Dallas, Dallas Willard suggests, this is a soteriology of attachment. Our new connection to God and Christ and to one another is our deliverance. Our loving commitment to one another in Christ is both the objective of the Missio Dei and the only strategy for our witness to the world and our discipling of nations that Jesus gave to his disciples and crucially to those of us following after them. Where it could be debated that in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus was only commissioning those disciples that were with him to go into all the world. There's no debate in John 17, 20, that he's sending all of us into the world to live out our loving mutuality with one another in Christ. And this mission is then extended. Transboundary missions practitioners will argue well, that's all very well and good, but what about the remaining billions who lack access to the gospel and do not see this loving mutuality worked out for the benefit of those societies? And this is a fair point. This is why God calls and gifts some Christ followers with both the yearning and the ability to cross boundaries to serve God's purposes elsewhere. Such servants need to be identified, equipped, and supported from their in Christ communities and service organizations should continue to help them go and thrive while they're away from their home communities. We now live in a globalized and globally connected world, so I don't expect transboundary service to cease. However, we could do with new ways to integrate and to support them as they go. And while it may be normative to participate in the mission of God via local covenantal communities in Christ, I serve the non-normative transboundary missions community. That is my passion. That is my sense of calling. And it is my great delight to serve in that space because in transboundary service, you expect to, you experience a greater degree of diversity. People from everywhere, going to everywhere with a heart to demonstrate and explain the love of God in practical ways wherever they land. Serving alongside people from different nations and, and the host nation as well. And this amplifies the challenges of living together in loving mutuality in Christ. But it is precisely this experiment, experience that also amplifies the potency of our witness and the transformation of our being. Our intercultural mutuality demonstrates to the world that Christ has indeed pulled down the barriers of hostility between us. And that's not to say it's easy, but it is possible to truly one, love one another in non-prejudicial common unity. Tensions don't just magically disappear in Christ, though. Uh, uh, on, our, on the contrary, the epistles are written specifically into situations where the tensions of difference are present. But we have to realize we cannot have harmony without tension. It's a musical fact. You cannot strike a harmonic on a stringed instrument until it is properly tuned under tension. And as we dwell together, the Holy Spirit tunes us. And in canonic fashion, we need to yield to the Spirit's turning of the screws, helping us to live in perpetual reconciliation. But, that, but it is precisely that, James says, that matures us. The more diversity, the more maturity. Transboundary servants need to hold on to this beneficial outcome as they experience their growing pains with one another. The growth that awaits us at the end of this process should be considered cause for great joy. And so I bring this into land. As we've discovered during this uh, COVID-19 crisis, traditional transborder missions have been greatly hindered, but the mission of God has not ceased. This has reinforced the realization that the life and love of God, the mission of God, is best manifest through indigenous expressions of the faith. Lemon Senna flipped the script when he identified that Christianity spreads globally through indigenous discovery more than 
by expatriate discipling. We're now firmly in an era where Christ is represented to varying degrees in every region of the world and certainly available via globally accessed media. But um, a great commitment perspective of loving mutuality, it reorients transboundary service from us to them, to an us with them journey of collaborative service, helping the gospel flourish locally, indigenously. In sum, this is the mutuality mandate. This is the mutuality mandate of the mission of God flowing out into our missions, living and loving together as participants participants of covenantal communities in Christ that glorify God. Wherever two or more gather, there such a community can be identified. The mutuality mandate holds, whether it's a micro community, an organized community we identify as a local church, a macro community such as a national or international ministry, or a transboundary community such as a cross-cultural missions group. Whether interpersonally or interorganizationally, Every relationship we have with others in Christ should be marked by our self-denying, canotic, reciprocated, loving mutuality, where we contribute the best of our giftedness, and we celebrate the unique grace of God that others bring into the collaborative relationship, where we maintain the unity of the Spirit by our bonded commitment to God's shalom where our loving mutuality flows out from us into the environments and societies around us, calling for justice and the restoration of right relationships, in radical collaboration for interpersonal, social, political, economic, and environmental harmony. As the Missio Dei expresses the eternal love of God extended into the world, so that love is spread through our love for one another as a shalom humanity. As we do so, then the world will believe and know that the Father lovingly sent the Son. Amen. The transcript is available from that link there. We might put it in the chat as well if you want to go back and dive into that in depth. But um, thank you so much for allowing me to share with you tonight, my night. Uh, it's been an absolute delight. Great. Thank you very much, Jay, for sharing with us the mutuality mandate for your preparations, for your time and your thought and your prayer to give us that encouragement this morning. We really appreciate you and uh, may God bless you for all that you've shared. The movement of God or the movements of God. Um, many people have been talking about Motor State. Uh, they've talked about it in terms of church planting movements. Uh, they've talked about it in terms of disciple making movements. Uh, but for me, I would love to share about mission training movements, because I think that is the thing that uh, all nations can really be involved in. So where did it start for us? Here's a little bit of a story. Uh, many of you will know that uh, myself and uh, my wife, Louisa, we look after the En Route uh, program at All Nations. Uh, and we've been running the En Route, what I call the En Route UK course now for several years, three times a year, September, January, April, we come together, an intensive time of training over 10 weeks. It was residential, but now via Zoom and even those two things blended together. So we've really moved on uh, during the pandemic. You can see we've had 43 courses uh, over about 13 years. We've had 534 graduates and uh, still going strong. You can see a picture there from the other day. Uh, the class went down to South Hall in West London, a uh, fantastically multicultural area. And uh, we shared an uh, Afghani meal uh, together. And that was absolutely super. And you can see the class there. At the same time, if it were possible, we take en route and we try and condense it and pack it into a week. And we call that Express UK. 
Uh, the next one coming up is the 12th to the 16th of July, just a few weeks away. And then we also run one in December as well. Uh, if you know somebody who might like to be involved in the residential course in July, uh, please point them in our direction. Again, we've had 23 courses so far, 21 residential. And then because of COVID, we've moved via Zoom as well. But the course that we do in July will be back residential on site here, as well as allowing people to zoom in. Who's it for? Uh, it's for multicultural diaspora church leaders and members, uh, for those about to engage perhaps in a short-term mission trip, uh, for folks working for mission agencies, office staff, and maybe home supporters of mission as well. And I would say for anybody that just wants to deepen what they have as a, as a general interest in mission would benefit from this course. Uh, we've had feedback which says, wow, you know, this course, I think every Christian should do this course. And we wish uh, that more and more people would be engaged in this way. But that's just what we've been doing here. As we've heard, uh, God's mission is on the move. It always has been. And it's how we participate in that that really is of interest to us uh, you can see that we have begun to engage I've, I've kind of put a map out here we've begun to engage uh, with different friends around the world to deliver mission training from these nations and we've done short courses and longer courses and it's been wonderful just to work and to serve together as friends in God's mission, participating in God's movements all around the globe. And in a minute, uh, you're going to hear from some of the folks uh, that we've been working with and serving with in these places. What does a mission training movement involve? Well, I've got a few characteristics that I've written down here. And many of them will be familiar to you. I think as we've moved around and been in different contexts, it's really uh, the concept and the practice of discipleship that has focused us and brought unity. And we've called that mission training. Um, there's been this idea of decentering, moving away uh, in virtual and physical ways from Easney here at All Nations, as we call it, and, and sort of moving off the hill to different places and then connecting those different centers together. That's been really fascinating to see that happen. We've been connecting and people have been connecting with us and it's been intentional and hospitable. It's been lovely. Uh, we've shared together, we've exchanged, and we've learned. Uh, we've participated, we've joined in with what others are already doing, with what God is already doing in many different contexts around the world. And we've had that as a privilege. Uh, we've been synergizing. Uh, the idea that one plus one could equal three, I know that doesn't make sense mathematically. It's where the output is greater than what you put in. And as we work with different friends around the world, and they put in what they can put in, and All Nations puts in what it can put in, we find actually the work then multiplies and grows beyond anything that we might have imagined. And I think this is the most exciting thing for me, just being involved in catalyzing new things that then start new things, mission training events that then catalyze other mission training events in other places too. Some of the characteristics of these mission training movements that we're beginning to see, it requires vulnerability on all sides. Uh, it requires us to take risks and not to walk into meetings and say, this is my agenda, this is how it's going to happen. Oftentimes, I find that we're walking into places and, wow, get this, people will ask you, well, what did you have in mind? I don't know. I don't know what I have in mind, but we have a sense that God might have something in mind. Why don't we look and pursue that and see what he brings to us together? That requires humility. We need to listen and learn from each other. It requires flexibility. I think the one thing that we've learned from COVID is flexibility. We need to be open to what people are bringing and to what we're sharing, but also discerning as to how we might move forward in those things. We found that COVID has given us the opportunity to multitask and run multiple courses at the same time in lots of different locations. And also it offers opportunities at very short notice. And we've needed to move quickly to actually keep up 
with what God has been doing during these times. Mission, my friends, is not on pause. No way during COVID. Actually, as Jay has already said, mission has been accelerating. And that has been wonderfully exciting to be a part of that. Enough from me. <laughs> uh, it's been a joy to work with all of the people that I've listed on the screen there. And several of them are with us uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you happen to be. Uh, a couple of them have sent me videos to share about what the partnership with All Nations is looking like from their perspective. And some of them will share live as well. But first, I'm going to share a short video from Abraham, Pastor Abraham, pastor of a multicultural church in West London. So I'm going to do that first. Let's see how that goes. Here we go. This is Pastor Abraham. Right. One minute on the partnership with All Nations. Hi, my name is Abram. I've done my master's and All Nations between 2003 and 2007. I'm one of those ex All Nations students who are so proud to be a part of this great community of mission minded people. That's one of the things that I really love about being part of All Nations uh, family. Not only I had a fantastic time on the campus while I was a student, uh, but also even years after graduation, I still have these wonderful connections with All Nations. More recently, I did a short course called Multicultural Church Ministry with Richard and Louisa. Uh, since I'm a pastor running a multicultural church in South London, the course itself, the discussions we had with the lecturers and students were uh, very stimulating and, and helpful, as always. But also the relationships, connections, friendship, partnership, sharing of thoughts and ideas are just absolutely precious. Uh, Richard and Louisa came to visit our church uh, on uh, several occasions, uh, either in person or on Zoom. They came to visit us with on route students uh, several times already. And we sent a couple of our church members uh, to get trained uh, in the express course. So there is this uh, ongoing partnership between me and us and the All Nations, which I really treasure about. Thank you very much. That's one minute. <laughs> Excellent, Abraham. Good job. Wonderful. Uh, great. Okay, I'm going to hand over from Abraham to Kaylee. Uh, Kaylee, uh, I know you're there. Maybe if you'd like to unmute and share your minute with us, that would be fantastic. Please go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Kaylee. Um, I'm happy to share with you that a month ago, the uh, first Express NL course took place. Um, this meant that the Express course that uh, All Nations offered, offers um, was given especially for people living from the Netherlands, or uh, uh, for people living in the Netherlands and from the Netherlands. Um, and it's, uh, uh, during this course, about nine people took part of it. Um, and they were all involved in different kinds of missions uh, in the Netherlands or worldwide. And uh, during the course, the students were taken on a journey together to think about mission and their own definition of mission. And it was an amazing journey um, that all took place online. Uh, but during this day, there, um, yeah, there was formed a little community of people that were learning and growing together. And um, I think really special that after these five days, they really felt part of like the bigger All Nations community worldwide. And um, yeah, they were ready to take their next step into mission. And um, what made it so special was that all the people that took part were living in the Netherlands, but uh, they came from different cultural backgrounds. And this really um, opened the conversations about mission and girl, uh, culture. So um, yeah, this was a great joy. And we are looking forward to the next Express NL course. Thank Praise you. the Lord. Well done, Kaylee. Thank you so much for joining us uh, from the Netherlands uh, this afternoon. Uh, gives you a little overview there of the new Express and L course. Wonderful. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, we're going to take a short video from my friend uh, Ava. Uh, pastor Ava is a, a pastor in Newcastle and also in Kinshasa. So I'll just, uh, he's, he's got a short message for us that I will just share now. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. It is a great joy to be part of this event, and it's a privilege to know that we are coming uh, from different parts of the world and uh, meet again in this uh, very big event taking place in uh, All Nations. I'm Eva Lukofo, a former student at All Nation Christian College. Just want to thank God for the privilege to be 
students to learn to come there in all nations and to learn about mission, about cross culture. I've been equipped, I've been trained, and I thank God for that. I would like just to appreciate uh, everything that the Lord has done in my life. And I know that uh, all nations have become a part of the family for me. And I'm still working somehow closely with the college through Richard and uh, uh, Louisa, respectively, because we've been working with them in Congo and also in Newcastle, where I've been based and they lead the church for nearly 20 years. I thank God because I know that at the moment I'm working the level of global, global when I'm between the DRC and the UK and the local when I'm either in Newcastle working locally or in Kinshasa working locally over there. Just would well, like to appreciate God because I know that uh, with uh, this uh, 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 such uh, big uh, uh, global vision, uh, I've been able to understand more about how to do the work of the Lord and the working strongly in partnership and working together. Coming together is a very good thing because it's building the church of God. Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you so much, Louisa. Thank you so much, all nations. Thank you so much, all the partners across the world. I just want to appreciate everything that you have done and that know that the Lord continue, will continue to bless you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord. Just wonderful to hear uh, from Ava as well. Wonderful. Uh, okay, back to sort of live stream again. Ram, are you are you there? Yes, there's Ram. Uh, please, uh, I, I know you've got a, maybe a minute and just a little bit more prepared for us, but please, it's lovely to see you. Please share with us, Ram. Namaste. I'm Ram Prasad Shrestha from Nepal. I'm so humbled to be part of this historic gathering today. You know what? I'm one of the students who have had wonderful opportunity to be trained at Red Cliff College and All Nations College. I'm an alumni of both colleges. I can see uh, several uh, familiar faces now from both college. I'm an executive director of National Mission Commission Nepal. We are so much blessed to extend partnership with All Nations College in equipping pastors and leaders of all uh, Nepal to prepare for God's missions. We are thankful to All Nations College and also to brother Richard and sister Luisa Evans who traveled to Nepal to train pastors and leaders. Missions Commissioner Nepal and All Nations College held several mission training in capital city of Kathmandu and far west of Nepal in Pokhara and Nepal Ganj. We continue to pray and seek partnership with All Nations in the future as well. Well, what I do at present here in UK, my wife and I are missionary here in UK, working in Rochdale near Manchester. We are focusing to reach out to the Muslims from Pakistan, India, Bhutan, uh, Bangladesh, and Iran. We are also working among refugees and asylum seekers to reach out to them with the gospel of Christ. By God's grace, we have been able to establish a church comprised of members from China, Bhutan, Iran, Republic of Ireland, and of course, from England. So once again, thank you very much for this such a wonderful opportunity. Jai Masi. Jai Masi. Jai Masi. Fantastic, Rev. Brilliant. Uh, just great to hear about ministry both in Nepal, but also uh, the way that the Lord has brought you to the UK as a missionary uh, to work in the north of England as well. Thank you so, so much for being with us. Ram, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and so we switch from Rochdale uh, to Mendoza, Argentina. And I can see that Tina has just uh, joined us. She's just been spotlighted. Uh, Tina, please uh, just share a little about some of the things that have been going on between All Nations and also with your amazing family as well. Okay, good morning from Argentina. I'm Tina and these are my parents. Hello. I have studied psychopedagogy and we, we serve as mission mobilizers and we invite some people from different churches to serve in some mission trips that we organize with the native people because we love engaging the people of God to, be, to bring transformation to his world. Uh, okay, I have a study on root of all nations with amazing friends. Richard and Luisa have visited Argentina and last year we helped a church in Chile to start a mission training. 
where they even some, some missionaries share about their experience in mission. Uh, we have students from Chile, Costa Rica, Brazil, Colombia, Peru. We are learning and praying for the nations. For more, this year, we are involved with a church in Costa Rica in a virtual mission training. And again, we are people from different places learning and praying about them. What is mission, Bible and mission, disciple and mission. Are you familiar with this? I think. <laughs> and this is on Root on the Move. We are God's people, loved and blessed by God. We are appassionated by equipping communities, uh, motivated by the love of, of God to learn and pray from Costa Rica, Argentina, Chile, Brazil to the nations because of the passion of being Jesus, being praised for every family. So glory to God. <laughs> Hey, glory, adios. Bless you, Tina. Thank you so much. And greetings to you and Gustavo and Christina as well. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Oh, there's Christina. There's your mum. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Christina. We oui. uh, And uh, finally, uh, we move to Uganda, Kampala and uh, Tony. Uh, could you round this time up for us just by sharing a little bit about some of the things that have been happening there? Yeah, sure. Uh, Tony, Tony Swanson, Tony and Kath Swanson, alumni of ANCC, circa 2002 to 2004. And as Richard says, we're presently locked down in Kampala, Uganda. So my role is as the African mobilization consultant for one of those old mission societies, Africa Inland Mission. And my wife, uh, I think she's there somewhere online, is the child safeguarding officer. Now, for the past uh, five years, I've been involved in promoting a 3D model of missionary mobilization across Africa using uh, the partnerships that we have, discovering God's uh, mission, helping churches and individuals discover God's call and their part in it, a development of for churches and individuals so they might effectively engage in that mission, and then deployment of the those individuals and those churches to areas of the greatest need. So partnering with All Nations Christian College has been a great joy in the last couple of years. Uh, the Express program has been great. We've run two courses, uh, two blended courses, one in Tanzania in Swahili and one in Uganda with around about 35 students in all. We are planning another in August, God willing. Uh, we found that by exporting this course, the All Nations uh, En Route Express course, it provides a very cost-effective way for people to access uh, missions training. It's uh, re reproducible and it helps to develop a, a very robust uh, missional capacity uh, within those who attend, especially the African church leaders whose eyes are open to, to much of cross-cultural or cr transcultural missions, aspiring missionaries, people who want, they feel a call on their lives, as well as those who are already involved in some kind of cross-cultural mission. So, en route, express, great course, great credibility, great collaboration, and great potential for developing people to engage in God's mission. Thanks so much, Richard. Oh, bless you, Tony. And please greet Kath from us as well. Wonderful. Uh, just to be friends with you guys and to be able to serve together with you guys as well. Absolutely wonderful. We look forward to what's going to happen in August. Uh, my time has gone. Hopefully uh, that gave you a little overview of some of the sort of mission training movement catalyst things that are going on in different places and continents around the world. Uh, and I think that's something that All Nations increasingly wants to be about, catalyzing, developing, and supporting mission training movements as part of the MOTUS Day around the world. So thank you, Abraham, Kaylee, David, uh, Ava, Ram, Alstina, and Tony. Wonderful to have you with us. And thank you for your contributions to this part as well. And with that, I will pass the time to Andy. So it's great that Redcliffe and All Nations have joined together recently, but Rosalie, can you tell us what excites you about this union of two alumni groups and you know what is possible looking forwards together as one family? Oh, it's not just one thing that excites me, Andy. Um, I think this is something that's been in God's plans for a long time, I think. And the way that this coming together 
of the two colleges happened and the the fairly easy i mean it was lengthy process but it was it was actually full of grace and i think we saw god's hand in it all along and i think one of the main things that excites me about it is the way the things that it makes possible for our alumni for current students and really for people engaged in god's mission all around the globe I think um, in terms of opportunities for further learning, for the, the CPD um, idea, and, and it's also a way for um, to strengthen, I think, the ties that our alumni have wherever they're serving. So it's, you know, it's kind of like when you're traveling and you meet someone and you find out that you both have a friend in common, a really good friend in common, and that just sort of animates people. And I think that that's one of the things that God's spirit um, has made possible through this coming together of the colleges and, and just the opportunities to, to listen to one another, to learn from one another, to probably better serve the church together than than we were apart so those are some of the things yeah there's, there's many more yeah thanks i mean obviously both colleges have been doing this for a very long time you know well over a century yeah uh, training and equipping uh in god's multicultural world you know it's our bread and butter in many ways so yeah. But looking forwards from 2021 in the, to the future, what do you see as essential to focus on, particularly over the next decade, with all the change that we've in, you know, experienced in, in recent times? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, I think one of the things that we've learned from the the last year, year and a half, really, of this pandemic is that we're not just going to go back to doing business as usual and all nations and Redcliffe together are probably better positioned to to face in and lean into positively this kind of new order um and and how we do that I think uh in terms of key issues ahead will be quite important. I think that the other, this gets to your first question, the other exciting thing about coming together is this, um, we're better placed to think about what are the issues that are going to be key for mission, multicultural mission, key issues for the church going forward and how does how are we training people women and men for for that for those things um so that so that we're really always discerning and i think we've learned through this last a year and a half um that discernment happens together so some some of the issues will be that on i think that continual learning from people that we might um, not have expected to learn from. I think that's one of the things that one of the gifts that the the history of the colleges adds to this because we've always been engaged in multicultural intercultural mission we we have an ear for hearing um, others and paying attention to those voices. So I think it's, uh, it, there'll be challenges, but it's really about the opportunities for, for learning from people that we would not normally learn from. Um, and even the format of uh, everything being pushed online, we were already prepared for that before the pandemic. And I think it's shown how that actually can work you know, we miss the interpersonal relationships. I wish I were with you in person right now. But um, but actually, God's spirit can work even through these, <laughs> yeah. even through a computer screen. <laughs> no, you're totally right. And, and I, I've loved uh, 
see that the opportunities that have been possible, you know, the fact that you can just have a quick 10 minute coffee break with somebody or a half an hour meeting with somebody or another session, and you can travel all around the world just in a few yeah. moments. It's kind of quite remarkable, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Global South collaboration, we've all talked about that for a long time, even multilingual training, mm -hmm. uh, lifelong learning, CPD, professional development, all of that. You know, we often talk about all of that. And obviously, as you've just said, we're already we were doing a lot of that before the pandemic anyway, but can you give us a glimpse, Rosalie, of what some of the things that you can foresee going forwards in the future? What What is ahead? Give us a bit of a picture of what you see uh, that we should be wrestling with. One of the the key areas that that all nations will play into is the new um, staff care and well-being aspect um, not just for mission workers and mission organizations but also for churches um, uh, I think the scandals that different churches and Christian leaders um, seem prone to unfortunately that's not that's not anything new I mean all you have to do is read Paul's correspondence with Corinth and you see that you know, these things have been going on for a very long time, but I think that those issues will take on new shapes and tones that uh, All Nations is well placed to address and to, um, to train and, could, you know, build, help, help the capacity building of, of church people and, and mission workers and part of that is exactly that exchange between um well that exchange across the world really it's not just it's not a one-way global south to north or east to west or west to east, whatever it's it's about that mutual learning that is already part of our dna i think but that will play into kind of asking the difficult questions, you know, who's at the table, whose voices are we, are we hearing, who's shaping the agenda? I think we, we have a good track record of asking those difficult questions and they're questions that are gonna be probably more on the forefront in the future of, of mission training, and uh, leadership preparation for, for church and, and things like that. So um, that and then learning the humility that comes from, from that international, multicultural, multilingual, as you said, exchange, because it's not, it's not easy to, to think about mission when, you, when you've been in this world for so long and thinking about so many issues. And then all of a sudden you meet um, someone that God has also called to work um, in Christian mission and they might do things very, very differently. And so having that patience and that humility to, to learn from that and to see, well, what is God calling us to do together? Um, and, I, and, and on that path, I think there's that it can be hard and it requires patience and humility, but I take great comfort, you know, that uh, Jesus never promised it would be easy. He did promise he would be with us. Uh, and and that's, that's kind of the spirit that I see um, the joining together of all nations and Redcliffe going forward, holding on to that promise that that we are walking with one another, with those that we might not have chosen to walk with even sometimes, but um, that Christ is walking with us, so. Yeah, it strikes me that that's what family is about, isn't it? That we we journey along together um, and we are one because we're yeah. called into Christ's family, yeah. I mean, finally, most people you know are on this call today are either um, folks from churches that uh, know and love us or alumni, Past yeah. students, past staff, uh, lots of current staff and current students as well. But how can we pray for one another, Rosalie? How can we support one another in all that's ahead? Uh, well, I think 
I think we we need to always pray that that our ears will continue to be open, that we will listen carefully um, to one another as as we move forward, um, whether staff, students, alumni, friends, and and that that part of leaning into the future to to which god god is calling us is about uh listening well to one another and and to those that god brings onto this this journey that we're on i think that's something we need to remember to pray about because it's sometimes you get so caught up in the busyness of things that that you forget to pause and just listen um i think we we need to continue praying for more people to join us on this journey um and to be grateful for those that have um that have already you know played such important roles in in praying for the colleges and supporting the colleges um and working for 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 this for this great cause um so i think a prayer both a, the petition for list to l be able to listen well to move forward well but also the prayers of thanksgiving for for the how far god has already brought us and um and remembering that we we stand on on the shoulders of of giants and and of the faithful and and that's a, a key part of our prayers of thanksgiving too so prayers for for those things prayers for energy <laughs> um to 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 be able to keep working hard thank you thank you so much so there it is um that was rosalie's advice to us prayers for one another to keep going to have energy um, there's a lot, there's so much to be thankful for. The Lord is at work. And um, I hope that you have found uh, our time to get together today really encouraging and challenging. I hope you're not too exhausted. Um, we've got a few things that we want to, to share with you in a minute. But I particularly right now just wanted to thank some very, very special people. In order to run all nations, in order to really put the training uh, into practice, we depend, we absolutely critically depend upon local churches, upon local partnerships, uh, project partnerships, particularly around London. And we are so, so thankful for each and every supervisor, church leader uh, um, that enables students to put their learning into practice, whether that be on a weekly basis through uh, placements or whether it's through the internship program, often that happens in the vacation times in normal circumstances. Uh, it's been quite an online internship program recently, but we are so, so thankful to each and every person that enables students to learn and put that learning into practice. Thank you particularly to Michael Rester, our tutor in this area, who does an outstanding job, particularly this year in difficult times indeed. And I just wanted to also um, thank uh, the number of new staff that we've had this year. Uh, it's been great, wonderful to invite a, a number of folks to join us on the team, particularly we're very thankful for Phil Moisey joining us as our ICT manager. Uh, we really needed to upskill significantly. You'll appreciate our uh, uh, IT provision, our IT support, our internet uh, access and so on. And it's great that Phil has joined us in order to bring a, a strengthening to our systems. We are a few weeks away from having another uh, uh, lease line, internet lease line installed here at Easney because we need a very strong internet connection. But it's not just the internet connection, it's the ability to interact and to learn well together. Imagining hundreds of people all with their videos on, it takes up a lot of bandwidth. So we're very grateful to Phil. For Alex and Cami that have joined us from Romania in a partnership with Barnabas International, it's a great joy to be able to, uh, to stand together, to work together, to learn together, to support pastorally and to develop uh, uh, programs around the world together. Um, our engagement team, which has been brand new since March, has welcomed uh, former students, uh, Emma Lawson and Vicky Townsend. And uh, we couldn't do today without them. So we are immensely thankful 
to both Emma and to Vicky and the rest of the team as well, of course. We've also um, welcomed, of course, what I'd lovely, I lovingly like to call the Red Cliff Four. It's not a uh, not a dodgy group that are going to break into a bank somewhere, but uh, it's been lovely to welcome Tim and Sarah and Rosie and Simon, as well as a whole host of visiting lecturers in order to run both the Teach Out program for existing MA students, but also more critically, really, to develop all the new initiatives, as Rosalie was talking about, the staff wellbeing, the staff care and wellbeing MA is being run by, by Sarah and by Rosie, with great support from Tim. It is outstanding to be able to join and work alongside such amazing colleagues. And of course, our team, our staff team is made up of volunteers, of people that are seconded from other ministries and churches, as well as those that are on the, the staff, the salary budget here at college. It's a great joy to be doing this together. Um, yeah, what a team, what a team. And I wanna hand over to, uh, to Jill now to tell us about a number of new publications from our staff this past year. Okay, um, yes, it's um, great to highlight some publications to you, all of which um, are in the All Nations Library. And I do hope that you are all members of the library. And if you are not, then please contact Francis Walker, who's on this Zoom as well. We'd love you to be accessing all our resources, both uh, in, in, the, uh, in the building and also online. But uh, yeah, publications, uh, we've got some biblically themed ones and some development themed ones and a worship themed one. So first up is Dr. David Baker. David is our lecturer in biblical studies. And David has produced a book which is called Getting to Grips with Biblical Hebrew. So it's an introduction to biblical Hebrew, originally written and published uh, for an Indonesian context, and then adapted and translated for students at All Nations to use. So it's a bit like a textbook, it's a teaching tool, and uh, it's available through Langham Global Library at 19, uh, 1999, £19.99, with a discount at reception as well. Next up, we have um, Dr. Tim Davey, who's lecturer and head of research and consultancy. Tim has joined us from Redcliffe, um, and he has um, written a book called The Book of Job and the Mission of God. How does the Book of Job connect with God's mission? A revised version of his PhD thesis, seeking to um, read through Job in the light of the missional nature of the Bible. So produced in 2020 and available at 25 pounds, but obviously a cheaper option on Kindle at seven pounds 42. Fantastic, thank you, Tim. Next up with a development theme, I'm delighted to highlight uh, Dr. Anne-Marie Wilson's book. Uh, Anne-Marie is a founder of the FGM charity 28 Too Many, and she's a former All Nations student from 2007 to 9. And uh, Anne-Marie has um, just launched this book actually yesterday called Overcoming, My Fight Against FGM. So it's based on some harrowing stories, um, but it's about overcoming. And although it's a sensitive topic, uh, it's well written and uh, just been produced. And again, something that some of you might find helpful to engage with, uh, priced at 9.99 with, again, a discount through college. Uh, next up, we have Dr. Mark Galpin. Mark Galpin is our postgraduate program leader and um, lecturer in development studies. Uh, Mark has uh, co-edited and contributed to this book, Undivided Witness, uh, which is presenting 10 key principles linking community development and the emergence of vibrant communities of Jesus followers among the least reached. So um, contribution by 12 practitioners, uh, giving 10 principles and dissolving the tension between church planting and community development. So you can get copies there for £12. Uh, again, you can see the details or cheaper as an ebook. Um, so thank you for that one. And finally, oh, a familiar face. Um, I think I recognize that person and so do you. Um, so praise God. Uh, I just completed my thesis uh, in worship across the cultures, training for like liturgical diversity, implementing a course for students at All Nations Christian College. So my thesis is in the US at the moment, but it's making its way across the waters to the All Nations Library and uh, looks at the area of contextualized worship. Um, so please uh, feel free to access that from the library shortly. So can I encourage you to buy and to read these publications? They're all making a valuable contribution um, to different areas of mission and ministry, and we hope uh, they will bless you and be great use to you as well. 
So thank you to all who produced. I'd like to now pass on to uh, Dr. Sam Cutty, our Vice Principal and Post um, Undergraduate uh, Program Leader. Thank you, Sam. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, uh, please, Lord. please relax. Uh, the Lord is good. All the time. Um, my name is Sam. I come from Kerala in South India. In the words of late John Stott, Kerala is a land full of coconuts and bishops. This is God's own country. I joined college in 2003, so serving here for the last 18 years. And for me, it has been a privilege and a humbling experience to be part of an amazing team and God's training. I serve as the vice principal of the college. And you might wonder that you have been in this meeting for the last one and a half hours. But this is not what we do. Usually in college, we have a break every 50 minutes or one hour. So don't feel sad. Oh, this is the life in all nations. No, we have a break. But this is an exceptional meeting. And that's why we continue um, without a break. But you will have some break later on. You heard from Richard earlier regarding the short courses, express and en route. Actually, friends, that's only a soup. That's only a starter. The best is yet to come. So I'm introducing um, the undergraduate program. It's a historic moment in the life of all nations that we got approval from the Open University to run all the undergraduate programs, both residentially and in an FDL mode. That means anyone can do a certificate, a diploma, or a BA program, wherever they are in the world. So it's not necessary to come to college. Obviously, if you would like people to come to college, but because of visa issues, finance issues, ministry issues, people are not able to come to college. So this is a fantastic opportunity that at people's own pace, they can do the program wherever they are in a flexible and distributed way. So basically you can be in a beach or in your pajama, Wherever you are, enjoying your coffee, whatever, you can do the program. So there is no excuse. Um, so even though I have been living here for the last 18 years, I don't really understand the British humor. I'm still trying to understand British humor. Um, so there was a husband and wife. I'm talking about an Indian couple not British couple. I'm not talking about Martin and Elizabeth Goldsmith, but um, an Indian couple, husband and wife, they were fighting and the wife left home. Husband was very sad. And the husband found out where the wife was. And he wrote a letter to his wife saying, I'm sorry, please come back. If you don't come back within the next 10 days, if you don't come back to me, I will come to you and stay with you. So there is no other option. If people are not coming to college, no other option, we will come to you. So this is a message Dear brothers and sisters, you need to tell. There is no other way you can't escape 
either you go to college on all nations or beware they will come and catch you can you please say that so this fdl will open up many avenues there is no visa issues and uh, no time zone basically uh, people in east asia having their supper maybe kimchi and sushi and everything uh, in canada they have their breakfast bacon and sausage and things like that in britain we have lunch i will have chicken biryani but my british colleagues they have something strange uh, whatever it may be we can thoroughly enjoy the company of one another so there is no problem with regard to time visa issues you know it is completely flexible so my message to you is this richard said earlier when he goes somewhere with the on route he has no personal agenda everything is open i am not like that i am an indian i have an agenda and that is either you come to us or we will come to you and now i will hand over to mark but before that we will see we will watch a clip life as we knew it changed massively over the past year but jesus's invitation to you hasn't come and transform the world with me make disciples of all nations love god and love your neighbor if you want to deepen your knowledge and application of the bible be trained and equipped to serve in a multicultural environment whether with your neighbors over the street or your global neighbors overseas it helps to get the right training to suit you but with all the uncertainty over the future it can feel overwhelming knowing which route to take at all nations our vision is that you would be transformed and go on to transform a hurting broken world with the good news of jesus you will learn alongside others in a vibrant multicultural community get practical hands on training build on healthy foundations biblically spiritually and personally and you can leave with a degree validated by the open university if possible study full time on our campus if not we will offer flexible learning options subject to open university approval so that you can continue your studies part time online or a mixture of it all whatever you choose we're here to support you wherever you are for wherever you're going uh how to follow that it's always a privilege to follow sam um so I'm going to talk very briefly about the postgraduate and the continuing professional development courses that we have. Um, so our postgraduate uh, program has seen significant growth over the last few years. We've had uh, about got about 50 people in the course at the moment from all over the world. Uh, we've got another 30 plus in the pipeline to join us this September. And uh, we're there from, uh, as I say, uh, many different countries. We've got over 20 countries represented, majority of them uh, learning online from their place of ministry, uh, but a few also studying with us residentially full time. So we've got a, a brief video to introduce the uh, postgrad program uh, to you. So can we watch the video now, please? The All Nations Postgraduate Programme is for those who already have a number of years of experience of cross-cultural mission and ministry. For those who want to reflect on this experience, deepen their engagement and understanding of mission and be equipped for the future. Study together with students from different nationalities. Serving in diverse contexts and ministries across the world. Using video conferencing technology, creating a dynamic, stimulating, biblically sound and rigorous learning environment. The, the tutors here are amazing. They're so engaging as well. They get you to think. They get you to really question your own assumptions, your, your biases, you know, get you to be thinking about what you're learning in very deep and impactful ways, life-changing ways, I would say. 
with the diversity of awards combined with flexible learning options. This enables students to study part-time from their place of ministry anywhere in the world. Or full-time residentially based at our college campus. Taught by specialist lecturers with cross-cultural experience. Are you ready to take the next step in your training to be equipped for what God is calling you onto in the future? So when we uh, revalidated the program three years ago, uh, we introduced two new awards to our postgraduate program. Uh, one was Multicultural Church in Practice, which uh, Abraham mentioned uh, earlier, and the other one was Global Ecclesiology. And through our merger with Redcliffe, we've been able to revalidate a seventh award uh, for our postgrad program in MA Staff Care and Wellbeing. And this is the new incarnation of the very well-respected member care uh, MA that Redcliffe has been uh, running for a number of uh, years now. So we're very excited to be able to offer that from this September. We've already got a number of students for that in the pipeline, but would really appreciate uh, you spreading the word about what is available. Uh, we've already, I've been counting up the number of people who've presented uh, today who've been MA students at All Nations, and we've had Abraham, we've had Jay, we've had Richard and Louisa, um, so it's great to see all of all of them. Uh, and I just wondered if anybody is out there, if you've done the MA or you're doing the MA, why don't you just put a, a word in the chat to summarize your uh, experience. So do promote the MA staff care and well-being. Also, Rosalie mentioned the CPD, that's Continuing Professional Development. We've now been accredited as an institution to deliver CPD training, and we are now going to go through a process of registering 10 of our courses, which are listed there on the, on the slide. Uh, so anybody interested, look out. We will be letting you know when those are accredited, and you can then earn CPD points uh, if, um, uh, through doing those, those courses. I'd like to just uh, highlight also two short courses that we've got coming up. One as a taster for the staff care and well-being, which is uh, looking particularly at the theology of staff care and well-being, which is on the 1st of July. Uh, do note the uh, discount for alumni from Redcliffe and All Nations. And then also a course coming up on crucial issues for mission in Britain and Europe. And this again is a result of our coming together with Redcliffe. It's led by Jim Memory, who has very extensive experience of mission practice in Europe, but is also teaching uh, on mission in Europe. And uh, he makes the point that often we, we realize that we need to get contextual knowledge when we go uh, outside of Europe, but surely we need contextual knowledge when we're working in Europe as well, whether we're from here or whether we've come from another context and we're serving in Britain or Europe. So I really want to strongly recommend this course. Uh, it's extremely uh, helpful for anybody who's serving in mission in the UK European uh, context. It covers issues of identity, issues of secularization, the impact of migration and globalization, and also how God is growing his church uh, in Europe at this time. So do share that with others. Do sign up for, your, for yourself. There's a, a link in the chat that you can use to uh, find out more about that course. Jill, over to you. Thank you, Mark. Um, well, another new initiative that we launched uh, in May was our Communities of Practice. Um, this is to bring All Nations and Redcliffe alumni together. And then once we've done that, we'll um, expand it to our wider uh, All Nations community. But we wanted to find a meaningful way uh, to foster engagement and relationship. Um, what is a community of practice? Well, a community of practice is where you have groups of people who share a common concern for something they do, and they learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. So it's a process of social learning that occurs when people who have a common interest in a subject or area of, area of collab uh, can collaborate, share ideas and strategies, determine solutions, 
and build innovations. So the four groups that we launched were in member care and staff wellbeing, arts and mission, intercultural church leadership and vulnerable children. And so we want to uh, continue those um, to help foster and improve the quality of our practice and our relationships. And we'll be um, also creating some new communities in the future. So it's you can still join one of the four and please look out for some of the new communities that will be coming up as we seek to um, connect well with, e with each other and engage in practice. So that's COPS, Communities of Practice. Uh, another new initiative, uh, we've launched Inside Out, a gap year program, um, an opportunity for any gap year students to come and be here at All Nations. Um, they can come for one term and do the en route course, and then they can stay and work and volunteer in our All Nations community. And then finally, they can go on a mission trip uh, with one of the three partners that we've um, actually put this together with, which is InterServe, Latin Link, and AWM, Arab World Ministries. So here's a little video to show you about that. And then after the video, Andy will come back and close our time together. So thank you. You're like a circle that floats around me, keeping me safe and sound. And when I fall, you've tied a rope to me. You're blessing me every day. I was down with an illusion, like a sparrow with broken wings. But now I shine with your reflection on me. Getting back up on my feet That you showed up Was written in the palm You are a statement That explodes like a bomb I get to push myself To victory You make me win You got me loose And set me free There's a lot going on, guys. You may be exhausted uh, watching all of this, but let me turn back to scripture and read a few very important verses from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. I wonder if today you're thinking, oh, I did my training all those years ago, uh, I'm done with training. Thank you. I just want to, you know, I want to encourage other people along. Praise God. You've got an extremely wonderful way of doing that. We're running an appeal called Enable All. And that means it's a way of supporting students going forward, students starting out on programs, maybe even in lifelong learning. And it's, a, it's an essential part of accessing the training, particularly for folks that are around the world and struggling financially to help them to be able to bridge that gap. Even though our fees are very reasonable, a lot lower than UK universities, for some people it's still too much. And we're running an appeal called Enable All. The link is in the chat box and we're gonna show you a very brief video now. And I would really commend you to this. Please pray for future students. And if you can, please give to this appeal. And if you would be willing, please share it with your churches and your networks because we would love to see thousands upon thousands of new people uh, accessing the training that's on offer at All Nations today.
all the videos that we've shown today are on our social media feeds on our YouTube channel and on our website. Um, please do uh, watch them again and, and share them with your friends or with others that you know as well. Um, just coming towards the end of our time together, just want, want to encourage you that if you're coming along to the Keswick Convention at all over the next three weeks, come and say hi to us. We, are, we have the privilege of running the Global Missions Input into the Keswick Convention for weeks one, two, and three. Uh, so we're running the, the, the short ser the service station bit in uh, base camp, and we're inputting into the evening missions program with students that are going to be doing mission interviews. So do come along and say hi if you're around. Um, you can physically come to Keswick this year. Shock horror. There's a, a Christian convention that's actually happening in person as well as online. And also we run every month uh, Prayer Ignite, brilliantly attended by folks from all around the world. And Lin Yi organizes this, uh, this uh, online gathering and sometimes it's been in person, but it's a wonderful joy to be able to welcome people from all around the world to pray in a focused way just for a couple of hours. And the next one there is on the 25th of June. I highly commend you this event to you. Please do join in. Thank you, Andy. Okay, let's pray. Father, what an... <laughs> What a brilliant um, feast we've been introduced to. Uh, but this is a season of great opportunity for your church. Yeah, that uh, in spite of the pandemic, the spirit of God, your spirit has been moving across the earth. You are still at work. And we've heard this morning about the Mizio Day, the mission of God. And God, you are calling us as your people to participate in it. Yeah, thank you, Father, for um, the times each one of us has had the privilege. We've had to be part of All Nations or Redcliffe College, and the, the privilege we've had to receive mission training in our day. And now, we in, in a time of this pandemic, this is a season of opportunity. And with all that we have heard this morning, would you remind us, Holy Spirit, of those that we can encourage in our church communities, in our local communities, if we think of them and how they can engage in what you're doing around the world. So Father, we pray um, as, we, as we close up this meeting and go into breakout groups, but Lord, you continue to stir our hearts that from all nations to all nations, our desire is to continue to see your kingdom come, your will be done, because your desire is that none should perish, but all to come to the saving knowledge of who you are. So Father, thank you for the privilege of what we get to do here at All Nations, but also all of us as the global, on, uh, global community from around the world, we get to engage, we get to partner, we get to see your kingdom come, your will be done and be part of it. In Jesus name, amen. <laughs>